Hey guys, it's Matsmus, and thank you so much for joining me today on this video. We are talking about anti-tank guided missiles today. Look, let's be honest here. If you're a tanker, this is your worst enemy. You can say what you want about tank on tank warfare. When it comes to modern day conflicts, one of the scariest things is an infantryman with one of these weapon systems. Whether it be a javelin, a conquers, a fagot, as a lot of you get uh, highly amused by that wording of that weapon system. But these things are deadly and they're just a small package but can knock out a 65 ton beast extremely quickly. Both NATO and any other country that come against them. As we're seeing most of the time nowadays in Syria and other conflict zones around the world, these weapon systems are being utilized even more and more. Whether it be the tow weapon system, you know, uh, to the javelin, they're extremely popular for modern militaries around the world. Some of them are a little less dated and, you know, not as great in terms of penetration and capabilities than others. But today we are talking about the 9M133 Cornet E missile. This is basically an updated version of some of the older weapon systems, as I just mentioned before, just similar to the Faggot and the Conkers. Uh, not the Conkers that you play around in school, guys, from the trees like I did as a kid. Fantastic, by the way. You should love doing that. Anyway, I digress. Uh, no, this is the modern equivalent of those weapon systems. A very effective anti-tank guided missile, primarily designed for engaging tanks. Um, main battle tanks, for the most part, and it's not really intended to fully replace previous systems um, because it's really, really expensive for the Russian military. So let's talk a little bit about its history, how it came to be, its features, and then I'm just going to obviously put my own little spin of what I think about this weapon system. Now, I am not an infantryman, never was, never will be, and I have a lot of respect for the anti-tank crews, the support crews that work within uh, infantry platoon using these weapons because... You know, these things are freaking heavy for one. Uh, it takes a bit of skill to use these things. It's not as simple um, for the older systems anyway to just point and shoot. You need to do a little bit of research, a little bit of training on how to actually use these things effectively. Especially when you're shooting out to incredible ranges like this one can. Um, so the missile carries a GRAU designation 9M133. And the NATO reporting name for this weapon system is the AT-14 Spriggan. The Cornet E is the name given to the export version of the Russian Cornet standard missile system. The system was first shown in 1994 and was developed by KBP Instrument Design Making Bureau, Tula in Russia, and is in production with the service of the Russian army as we speak. The missile has been exported to Syria, Jordan, UAE, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, India, Morocco, Algeria and Greece. Although, I'm not too sure how Greece can afford this weapon system. I'm just kidding, Greece. I'm just kidding. Your debt is our burden to all of Europe. I'm just, totally kidding. I'm sorry. The system can be fitted to a variety of tracked and wheeled vehicles, including the BMP-3 infantry fighting vehicle, as well as serving as a standalone portable system. The self-propelled Cornet missile system is manufactured by the Volsk Mechanical Plant, or Volsk Russian Federation Mechanical Plant. The Cornet E was reported in April 2005 to be the missile system that was pretty much ordered by the entire government of Eritrea, I don't even know how to say that country, but at an extremely high cost. In March 2009, it was announced that 244 Cornet E missiles had been ordered also by Peru under a $25 million contract. The missile systems were actually delivered in January 2010, so it doesn't take too long to make these things guys, but that's a lot of missiles. The launcher fires Cornet missiles with tandem-shaped charges or high-explosive anti-tank warheads to defeat tanks fitted with explosive reactive armor or with high-explosive incendiary thermobaric armor warheads for use against bunkers, fortifications, and fire emplacements, and can also actually be used on infantry hiding within buildings that can be, you know, in-depth, very wide open window that can be engaged from a long distance. The tripod launcher includes an optical sight, thermal sight, laying drives, missile launch mechanism, and missiles kept in a storage and transport container carried by the unfortunate poor bugger who has to bring it behind them. The operator uses either optical or thermal sight to detect and track the target. The thermal sight is designated the 1PN80 and is produced by the State of Institute of Applied Optics or NPO GIPO of Kazan, Russia. The Corner Anti-Tank Missile is an advanced ATGM with a spiral trajectory. It is used on a tripod launcher and the 1PN79-1 thermal sight and forms the 9K135 missile system as a whole, which can actually be carried and operated by a two-person infantry crew. This missile's fearsome reputation is actually coming from its extreme range that it can perform far beyond most current anti-tank weapon systems out there. The FGM-148 Javelin, for instance, can actually only deliver its lethal top attack warhead to around 2.5 kilometers away, while the original Cornet E developed by this company has a maximum range of 5.5 kilometers, guys. 
This will outdo rival systems and they pretty much upgraded it though to make it go even further. The improved Cornet EM has twice the maximum range of its predecessor. The Cornet's tandem heat warhead is just as intimidating for its size, with a 152mm diameter is one of the largest HGMs ever built. This is a feature that's meant to defeat the threat posed by explosive reactive armor. Armor penetration for the heat warhead is stated to be around 1200 millimeters with its range at five kilometers. The missile has a semi-automatic command to line of sight system or SACLOS laser beam riding guidance, flying along the line of sight to engage the target head on the direct attack profile. This basically means that the weapon system must communicate with the rear of the missile to actually be able to engage the target. The Cornet was designed to conceal its operator who could aim it while either crouched or lying prone behind cover. This is why the launch tube is mounted above the fire control system so that basically you could stick the tube over the top of a hillside or top of a berm or a wall and launch the missile with perfect accuracy without exposing yourself to the enemy. The first reported instance of the Cornet engaging hostile forces was in Iraq during the US led 2003 evasion. Although no photographic evidence exists of these incidents, Iraqi Cornets were able to disable two M1A1 Abram tanks and an M2 Bradley IFV. The Cornet has quite an impressive combat record in other countries too, and it really does reflect its growing importance in the modern warfare and battlefield, where ordnance like this for taking out vehicles and structures, and even sometimes low-flying aircraft, is very badly needed. There is also the Cornet EM. It's an upgraded Cornet with a laser beam riding guidance system and a range of 8 to 10 kilometers. There are two different missiles, a standard anti-tank missile with a tandem heat warhead that has a range of 8 kilometers. It can penetrate from 1100 to 1300 millimeters behind explosive reactive armor. The second missile has a thermobaric warhead and a range of 10 kilometers. The Cornet D is an anti-tank missile carrier with a long range Cornet EM ATGMs. It is based on the Tiger 4x4 utility vehicle carrying eight Cornet EMs on two separate launchers. This missile is also used on the new unmanned turrets of the Armata IFV, otherwise known as the T-15, and the Boomerang APC. Cornet T is an ATGM carrier based on the chassis of the BMP-3. The Cornet T is armed with twin missile launchers. The Cleaver, or a KBB designed remote weapon station, is equipped with a 30mm cannon and a cell carrying four Cornet EMs. So, there you have it, the Corner E, quite an advanced Russian anti-tank guided missile. Uh, you know, everybody gives the Javelin the pinnacle of anti-tank guided missiles, but this is clearly quite an updated weapon system that's doing quite well at being able to knock out tanks. Honestly, if I was a tanker and these things were coming up against me, I'd be pretty nervous. They do have quite a bit of penetration value, and especially when this weapon is designed to engage against explosive reactive armor threats. I'd be pretty nervous, I won't lie to you, and like I've mentioned before, an infantryman with one of these things knocking out an entire tank, we're talking about a weapon system that's, you know, let's say $250,000 for the complete kit against a tank that costs twelve to $13 million, you know, and that's a very expensive top tier tank, but it's capable of doing so, it is able to knock out a vehicle like that, and I think the world of anti-tank guided missiles is just going to expand and expand more and more every single day. The Corner E definitely for the Russian military is quite a capable weapon system, being able to puncture through quite a bit of armor. And the fact that it's quite versatile, it's not too heavy, it's very capable of being operated by a two-man crew, that's key, you know. If you just have a weapon system that's too heavy to lug around or it's too you know, really difficult to work with. I know, for instance, the tow launcher, a lot of people that I've spoke to in the past uh, in the US military have said that it was quite a bulky unit to work with, quite difficult to work with sometimes. Uh, I'm not too sure how the Russians think about this one, but I mean, they're still using it, so hopefully it's working quite well for them. So guys, thank you so much for joining me on today's video. I really appreciate it. Uh, leave me a like if you enjoyed it and a thumbs down if you didn't. I love listening to you guys uh, give me some feedback as to how you thought the video was. What do you think of this weapon system too? I always like to hear people's opinions on especially Russian equipment because I don't really get much uh, feedback from, you know, US equipment for the most part. So it's nice to hear everybody's thoughts on the Russian side of things. Um, as always, guys, if you want to support my channel, go check out my Patreon account and it's much appreciated if you do go that way. And thank you so much again for joining me. All the best and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.